For pretty much my whole life, I've been involved in hockey. From minor and junior hockey, officiating, heck, I even drove a Zamboni and made ice for a few years. And I still play the game to this day. I worked video production for Hockey Canada for a few years, including the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and then was manager of video production for the Edmonton Oilers for five seasons. When I helped document the construction of Rogers Place in Edmonton, I developed a fascination on how these buildings come together. I visited 34 NHL rinks, and after my time in the NHL, I decided to start this YouTube channel to share with you all that I have learned about them. Who knows, you may just learn something new before you head to your next hockey game. I'm Jeff Nash, and this is Rinks Around the League. Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, <clears throat> Jeff Nash, Rinks Around the League. We, uh, or I, <laughs> have uh, decided to make a ice rink in my backyard. And uh, for the last few winters, I haven't done it yet, just because the backyard has been so, it's just so uneven. It's really difficult to level out uh, the backyard in order to uh, have ice. But we had about, oh geez, almost a foot, foot and a half of snow here in the last few days. So. And it all landed in my backyard, so I thought I might as well try to flatten it out, uh, level it out, and try to take a stab at making a rink in my backyard, which is the first time I've done it in a long time. So if you don't, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, there's people actually have flat backyards or uh, pastures or green spaces or whatever, and they actually put up boards and line it with plastic and everything. and. Um, I'm going a little bit old school with this one, uh, just using snow. So you can use snow much like you would with dirt. You could use it, um, you know, pile it in the low places and actually have a, if you have a length of board, you can actually smooth it out and pack it. Um, so I put it in kind of the uh, low areas. And then what I did was uh, stomped on it, uh, tried to pack it as much as I could. Um, got the kids in some toboggan sleds and actually pulled them around to really try to pack it as, as hard as I could, left it overnight, packed it some more, uh, added some more, uh, level, leveled it out again. And right now I'm on to misting right now. So if you're actually creating a uh, ice rink in a facility, uh, these would be your seals, I guess. And it's about minus seven, minus 10 here in, in Edmonton. And uh, it's perfect weather for doing this because you can bundle up, do your floods, uh, you know, not get too uncomfortable with, you know, the temperature, but it's cold enough that the water that you lay down will freeze uh, pretty much right away. So anyways, this is kind of, you can see it's a little shimmering here, right, you know, in those areas. You know, I try to get it as flat as I can get it and just missed it. And, you know, it's kind of the most painstaking process of the whole thing is, is misting it and trying to build up that first real layer of ice before you get into really heavy floods and uh, again it's it's time consuming and a little bit test your patience uh, now and again to uh, to build up that ice but you know it takes time you just gotta stick with it and just keep going and going and going and that's what I've been doing so while I'm doing this you know I'll probably do this for a couple hours at least tonight uh, try to really kind of build up at least a little bit of layer I'll let that freeze overnight it's not supposed to snow overnight for the next few nights here so I'm gonna just let it freeze and then hopefully tomorrow I'll hit it with uh, some cold floods which is more of a sprinkler hose spray and kind of do little by little eventually you know the first few sprays are really really quick you just want to kind of really slowly build up those layers and then you can kind of lay it on you know the mist heavier and heavier and heavier and then as soon um, as you've kind of built up enough that you know it's not going to melt all the way through and melt through the snow you can actually start using the uh, kind of more of a spray nozzle uh, function of the, of the hose and actually lay on some pretty thick floods and then once it gets probably thick enough to to stand on you can actually put the hose and actually put on some some pretty thick layers How's it going, Sammy? Yeah. How's the lime painting going? It's actually very fine. Is it? Yeah? 
How you doing, Ella? How's those circles coming? Good. All right, well, the uh, warm weather finally went away and I was able to put some uh, seals back down to build up the ice a little bit. And uh, now we're on the painting, which is always the most exciting, kind of nerve wracking part, especially because the mini rink here wasn't exactly the same proportions as the actual NHL rinks in terms of ratio. So I had to like use my uh, limited math skills and figure out a way to make this work on the rink. But I think I did pretty good. Everything seems to be lining up so far. Uh, I'm about to get working on the uh, center ice logo there. That's going to be a secret. Can you tell what it's going to be? <laughs> I got some help from my my kids here. Got Ella who's doing the face off dots right now and then Sam doing the blue lines. Doing a pretty good job. So yeah, we're going to get going on this and then I'm going to seal these tonight and hopefully I can build up a little bit of flood and we can skate on it this weekend. Alright, so we've uh, I finished the center ice logo there and uh, some of the markings and the uh, lines and the circles and the gold crease creases and um, battling the elements here because I'm trying to seal in all my paint. Uh, the forecast calls for freezing rain and snow so I'm kind of racing against the clock here to get all the stuff sealed in. Uh, those who make ice will know that once you get the paint down, you gotta seal it in to protect it. And uh, with, you know, with freezing rain on its way, you know, that might be a good thing. But uh, anytime you have water on it, you just want it to build it up as slowly as you can go, build up those layers so you can uh, add some more floods on top. But with freezing rain, it could be hit or miss. It could be a little bit of freezing rain, which actually might help. It might actually hit the ice surface here and freeze instantly and help me actually build my seals but it could also uh, actually rain <laughs> and wash away all my lo logos and make it uh, bleed. Now some of you may be asking why I went with the old Northlands Coliseum logo and there's a couple of reasons. Um, one of them being you know it was kind of the home barn for the Oilers when I was a kid growing up and obviously during the 80s heydays they won all their Stanley Cups there and uh, it's kind of a cool logo. It's kind of a, a snowflake cross between a, a compass. You know, the uh, the pointy end there actually uh, points north. Um, kind of pays homage to the original best ice in the league back in the 80s. It was uh, kind of a toss up between uh, Rec Old North Lance Coliseum and Minnesota. But, uh, you know, Dan Craig and Mike Craig. They kind of started their careers out here in Edmonton at North Lance Coliseum and they made that awesome ice. It was always dubbed the best ice in the NHL. And you know, it's just kind of a nod to those. And you know, during my short stint in the NHL at, uh, you know, then called Rexall Place, you know, I got to know a lot of the crew there. Um, just in passing, I've always, uh, you know, whenever they were installing the ice or doing some sort of cool installation, I was always there to kind of ask questions and stuff. So kind of a nod to that crew, uh, you know, George, uh, all the crew at Northlands Coliseum, uh, former Rexall Place. Um, I just figured it was a kind of a fitting tribute to the crews that worked hard in that rink for all those years. And uh, I'm not gonna pretend that this is gonna be the best ice in Edmonton, but uh, at least it'll look good. And yeah, it's just kind of a cool, simple yet complex logo. Like it looks simple. Um, to do the stencils, stencils to do this actually, was pretty tricky. I actually wanted to do an actual uh, overlay with pinholes to do the whole chalk method to show you guys how to do, or how they do it actually in the NHL. When they do logos, they have like these big sheets of paper, they have uh, chalk, which they uh, kind of brush through and it kind of does these chalk outlines. And I wanted to do that, but uh, I couldn't quite punch holes in the paper well enough to demonstrate that. So what I actually had to do was cut an actual stencil out and um, and do it 
in a, in a different way. So I think it still turned out really well. The other thing that I'm quite proud of actually is uh, in terms of ratio, condensing an NHL size rink into this mini rink, uh, it took a lot. <laughs> Trust me, it took a lot of math skills in my head. I'm sure people who are a lot smarter than me uh, were able to figure that out. But for me, it was really tricky to figure out the math behind making sure that the, the lines were adequately placed and the face-off dots and the face-off circles were in the right spots and the gold crease and stuff. So it's not perfect um, like an actual NHL rink, but I actually figured out the ratios and the math around it to make it uh, work out well so I think it turned out really well it's always when you do the paint it's always the most stressful part because you hope it uh, turns out um, and the other thing too you know when you do when you make the layer the base layer out of snow it actually makes your own whitewash it actually turns your your rink automatically white so you don't have to paint it white to have it that white look so uh, anyways I'm gonna continue on with my seals here uh, seal that puppy in and hopefully fingers crossed it doesn't rain too much tonight and uh, I can get on to some floods. Hey everyone just an update on uh, <clears throat> the mini rink here. So we've gone through some couple we've gone through a couple of fluctuations with temperature it, it went uh, really cold, it got a big dump of snow and then it got really warm and basically it all melted away. Uh, the weather spared my mini rink uh, for the time being. The sun actually uh, goes behind the fence line here and actually doesn't shine right on the rink. But then we got a big dump of snow overnight and uh, again it dumped it right over top of my backyard. So uh, I was able to create some uh, some boards here crafted out of snow by just uh, shoveling it, packing it, shoveling, packing it, and then I hit it with a, a sprinkler hose just to kind of make ice so it kind of firms up a little bit so when the puck hits it, it kind of bounces off. It doesn't go chunk right into the snow. So um, anyways, it's coming along quite nicely. Uh, been able to put some some layers on. The kids have been on a skate for a couple times. Oh, it's supposed to be cold for the next week or so heading into Christmas here, and I'll throw some more layers and more floods on but i think it's pretty much good to go right now just uh, the odd flood just to make it a little bit smoother but the kids have been on it and it's been it's been a ton of fun and the kids have been enjoying enjoying it so yeah so a little bit of an update but yeah, i think it's we just gotta add some nets and it's pretty much done so it's a lot of hard a lot of hard work but uh i think it turned out really nice <laughs> 